Good evening. I'm Pastor Justin at Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and I want to welcome you to the first midweek service in our Advent 2020 season. As I welcome you, I want you to find a piece of paper and a pen, or maybe even the notepad on your phone, something to write down your thoughts as we go through worship today. You can pause this video now and do that, or you can continue to look for something while I talk. I will not take it personally. See, 2020, man, I think it's going to go down as a year many of us would love to forget, right? Our anxiety is high in our society. We got this problem with basic needs like toilet paper, which are once again hard to find. With every passing day, it feels like we're getting closer and closer to the edge. So as Advent begins, it seems appropriate to me to remember the anxiety in the hearts of the people who awaited the birth of salvation a year before Jesus was born. Back then, Israel was the nation on the edge, politically divided, religiously fractious, and all those things weighed on the mind of the high priest named Zechariah. His job was to enter the sanctuary of God and to burn some incense, to offer prayers for his people to God, prayers for the whole nation. As the smoke curled, From the fragrant incense, Zechariah raised his head from his prayers to find an angel standing beside the incense holder. Zechariah was afraid. The angel told him that God had listened to his prayers. And not just his prayers for his country, but also his personal prayers. See, at home, Zechariah's wife was heartbroken. She couldn't have a baby. As Zechariah prayed for his nation's salvation, he must have snuck in a prayer for his grieving wife, for the first words from the angel's mouth were these. Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son. God cared for the prayers of one lovesick family just as much as God cared for the prayers of a whole nation. Okay, so now you can take out that piece of paper and that pen. As we remember Zechariah tonight, I want you to consider... What prayers do you lift up to God like incense? Take a moment now to write those prayers down. Chances are good that some of you out there wrote down something you need. Each week in Advent, we will talk about what we truly need. We'll talk about our need for restoration and our need for forgiveness, our need for healing, and we'll discover how God truly provides for those needs. So whether you come to worship desperate for restoration, longing for pardon, or hungering for healing, I invite you now into God's presence with these words, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid, for you are a friend of God, and God has heard your prayers. You are 
Let's pray. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine that we may be saved. Look at us from your place in heaven and consider what you see here on earth. Do not let us suffer, but restore us. Give us life. Give us joy. Give us patience as we wait for the rebirth of hope. For we pray in your name. Amen. My friends, hear this. A reading from Psalm 80. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock. You who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh. Stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O God, let your face shine that we may be saved. O Lord, God of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? You've fed them with the bread of tears and given them tears to drink in full measure. You make us a scorn of our neighbors. Our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your light shine so that we may be saved. But let your hand be upon the one at your right hand the one whom you made strong for yourself, and then we'll never turn back from you. Give us life, and we will call on your name. Restore us, O Lord of hosts. Let your face shine on us, that we may be saved. All right, let me tell you the, the brightest way to start my day. <laughs> it actually begins the day before. I go to Flyboy Donuts. I buy one strawberry donut, just one. I hide it at my house. The next morning, I wake up my daughter, and I say, Amaria, I have a donut downstairs. And then this little girl pops up like done toast, and a smile starts in her eyes and spreads to her cheeks, and it grows on her lips to make this grin brighter than sunrise. That is the brightest way I could start my day. So I wonder tonight, whose smile brightens your day? If you got that notepad in front of you, write it down your response. Go ahead. Whose smile brightens your day and what makes that person smile? Just write down their name. When my daughter gets that cheek stretching smile on her face, you know, problems can't really fit in the same room. My daughter's smile pushes the trouble of the world out of you. And that's what a good smile does. A good smile makes the world right again. We just read from Psalm 80, and that psalm has a refrain. Restore us, O Lord of hosts, that let your face shine that we may be saved. So consider what the psalmist is saying. Let joy be on your face when you look at me, God. Give me a smile, O God. That's what the psalmist is asking for. The problem is the psalmist knew that you can't see someone's smile unless you're looking at their face. And the psalmist knew that his people hadn't looked for God in quite some time. So when the psalmist says, Restore us, O God, let your face shine on us that we may be saved, it means before we run away, God, put your hand on our shoulders. Help us turn around so we can see your smile again. The psalmist and his people were being killed by their trouble. And the psalmist knew that only God's smile could make the world right again. Because, I mean, think about what it's like when you see the person you love smile. Think about what it means when God smiles, lights up the whole world. When God smiles, what is broken is restored. At the beginning of Advent worship tonight, I mentioned Zechariah, that priest who lived in a broken country and had a heartsick wife. This was a guy who needed a smile from God. And I am sure that this week, maybe some of you feel the same way. Well, after this angel's visit, his wife Elizabeth conceived. When Elizabeth realized she was pregnant, you know what she said? She said, this is what the Lord has done for me. God looked favorably on me, and God took away the disgrace I have endured among my people. You hear what she's saying? 
She's saying that her friends and her family and everyone she knew looked down on her because she didn't have a baby. And this isn't a fertility problem. This is a community problem. Her community was broken. God smiled at her. And yes, she got pregnant. But more importantly, God took away the shame her community made her feel. And when Elizabeth and Zechariah's baby was born, Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit. And what did he say? He said, Blessed be the God of Israel, for God has looked favorably on God's people and redeemed them. God has raised up a mighty Savior for us that we would be saved from our enemies in the hand of all who hate us. So both Elizabeth and Zechariah knew what it felt like to live in a broken world. Elizabeth felt ashamed of her body, and Zechariah was afraid for the hatred he saw in and around his country. But when God smiled at them, they felt the shattered parts of their lives were restored. This is what it means to wait for God. To wait for God to smile for us. Nowhere is that more evident in the gospel than with Mary, Jesus' mom. When she saw how Jesus would bless her life and the lives of everyone around her, she felt her spirit rejoicing because she said, and you can guess it, God has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. She sang a great song where she proclaimed that the proud had been scattered. The rich skipped a meal and the hungry ate well. God made good on old promises. And maybe this song tells us about the things that were broken in Mary's life. Maybe it tells us that Mary herself felt unnoticed and lonely. Poor. And really hungry. Even forgotten by God. But then God smiled. When God smiles at us, it makes things right again. So get out those notepads one more time. Friends, we follow a God who is just waiting to brighten our day with a smile. So where in your life, where in your life do you need to see God smile? What part of your life is broken? Where do you need some restoration I want you to write it down. Where in your life do you need to see God smile? Write it down and make it your song to God. As you write, I will pray for you that you will see God's shining face.
to the end of the age to be. Your very name puts the proud to shame and to those who would fear you. You will show the strong to flight for the world is about to turn my heart shall sing of the day you bring let the fires of your justice Tonight, as we pray, I invite you to respond to each petition with, Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Let's pray. God of Elizabeth and Zechariah, Simeon and Anna, you break into our fearful world with news of joy and gladness. Give us the assurance that you hear our prayers and guide our feet into the way of peace. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. God of Mary, you know the fears of your people. Lift up the lowly, especially those who are sick, those who mourn, those who are hungry, and all in need of your care. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. God of Joseph, your message calls us to let go of our fears and to place our trust in you. Sustain us in your hope as we await our Savior's birth. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. God of all creation, you name us as your precious and chosen people, and you redeem us through Christ. Take hold of our hearts. Shine the love of your smile through our lives. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, Teach us to boldly pray at all times, in all circumstances. When words fail, intercede for us. When our faith falters, embrace us with your love. Restore us, O oh God, that we may be saved. Amen. I'm so glad you could join us today for worship. 
wherever this finds you, I want you to know that God is there with you. And God has truly smiled on your life. You made it this far after all. As we go from this place, I want you to know that God's blessing goes with you into the rest of this Advent season. And I hope you'll join us right back here next week, this same time for our next Advent worship. God's blessings with you until then. Today, as I send you out, I have a line, and you respond just like you did at the end of the prayers. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Fear not. Christ is coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus.